Hey YouTube, Dan Ottawa here. Last week I made a video going over PV Poke updated rankings because they basically bumped up those who were a little bulkier and lowered those who had more bait moves. So then I asked you guys, would you rather see a Retro Cup team or a PV Poke analysis team of the underrated slash overrated Pokemon? And you guys said you wanted this. I did spoiler alert in about later this afternoon. I'm going to do my last Retro Cup team anyway. So two, two videos today. But I did want to focus on the overrated, underrated, in my opinion, PV Poke rankings. Now, PV Poke, and my, I've said this and others have said this, you can realistically build a team around any Pokemon if you team build correctly. So you don't need to worry about that. But I wanted to go over, in my opinion, why I think some Pokemon are overrated on here and why some are underrated on here. And uh, so, again, these are my just opinions on this. You can have your own opinions on it. I'm just going to give you... I'm going to go over basically the top 200 Pokemon. I won't go over every single one, obviously, but I'll just go over sort of categories and point out the ones that I think are overrated or underrated and why and give that sort of analysis. So let's get into this. Let me just make sure I have everything up here because I've got a few things going here. Okay, so we start on the main page here. We start with your reddish steel meta. So your metas that are super strong against almost anything and can get out of situations. Like it has obviously some weaknesses, but for the most part, they're just super strong. Registeel, Machamp, Trevenant, Walrein, Stunfisk, Scrafty, Swampert, Altaria, like Machamp, like Tongue, like Swampert again. Top 12, in my opinion, all those are good. The first problem I have is with Bastion XL. Because let's go into this matchup analysis. So what you're going to see here is like a ton of wins and why 35 wins, 19 losses. So you can... You're probably wondering, like, okay, if something has that strong of a win ratio, why do you think it's overrated at that highest at that spot 13? And so if you go down to the wins, let's go down to the wins here. So for those of you who don't know how PV poke works, it basically gives you a ranking here between zero and a thousand. If you have a thousand, it means you're just like you're gonna dominate the match and they're gonna do like zero damage against you. And on the other end, same the exact opposite. You're going to get dominated and you're not gonna do much damage on them. So obviously, because uh, this has so many resistances, it can beat your flyers, it can beat your uh, things that are weak to rock. Uh, so like the, the flyers get walled, your charmers get walled, your ice get walled. Um, so flyers here, and so that's why you see so many, eight, like, to, so put in perspective, so like a thousand is like you totally dominate. So realistically, anything above like, 600 to 650 is like or 700 yeah 650 ish i'd say is like domination like you're gonna win pretty easily and below 350 is you're gonna lose pretty handily as well so why it's ranked so high is because so many 800s and 700s here like could you just dominate because there's so many pokemon that just cannot throw anything against you and the xl is extremely tanky why i think it's overrated let's go to the opposite end because you have so again I said under 350 means you lose handily. Look at how many are under 350 here. Stunfisk, 82, which means like you get almost nothing off here. This is the one shield too, right? So Diggersby, Whizcash, Registeel, Stunfisk, Metachamp, Scrafty, Machamp, Swamper, Toxicroak, Obstacle, Invigoroth, Politoed, Deox. All below 300, which means that you just get absolutely destroyed here. And to have that many, not just Pokemon beat you, but meta Pokemon beat you, in Great League makes me think that this is overrated because again, if you get the good matchup, 100%, you're just gonna dominate. But if you get a bad matchup, you're probably gonna lose pretty handily. And if I'm the 13th ranked Pokemon, I don't want a Pokemon that's gonna lose this easily that often. So that's why I think it's personally overrated. So then we, let's go down the list here. So there's a couple of Pokemon here, like I cannot speak to, I can try and do analysis, but I, I, I'd rather just speak to the Pokemon that I've used uh, and think that they're overrated, underrated. Like I haven't used Laurinaitis yet, haven't used Regirock. So I can't really speak to them, like I can go here. So what would I do if I was gonna do analysis and I haven't used the Pokemon? So I go here, I'm like, okay, 29, 26 record overall, not bad. Not great, but not bad. So like off the bat, like 14 with that, win loss percentage is kind of not great and then i go to i go to the bottom and i'd say okay like where are your wins like okay you got your super strong wins here against your waters you got some nice like a couple meta things here bastion stunfisk umbreon so like good strong wins and then i kind of go into like the middle range like 
okay, where, what are the matchups that are going to be close? And then like, okay, Wall Rain, Sableye, Jalicent, like Ninetales, very meta Pokemon in the middle here. And then I go to like, okay, what's absolutely going to dominate you? And then it's like Pidgeot, Driftling, Talonflame, Noctowl. So it looks like Fires and Flyers. You're going to get dominated, um, right? And then a bit of sort of Grass and Drapion and stuff like that. And then we're getting to sort of random stuff in the 300. So like there are, in my opinions, like a lot in the, there's a lot in this range here. So like it's tough to, and then you can also run like, maybe it changes in a two shield. So you go change it to the two shield. Does that change your record? 30 and 24, not a ton. If shields are down, does that make you better or worse? That makes you about the same. So that's how I do it if I was trying to do like the individual, but I don't, again, I haven't used it enough, so I don't know the matchups in and out. So like I do, like you're going to see later on with Shadow Drapion. So I that's fine just there. Then you get to say, well, as is Deox, Nidoqueen, yeah. Whizcash. I have a problem with Whizcash at 20. And here's why. So for the first part, 19 and 35 record. You're telling me the top 20 Pokemon overall in the one shield has that bad of a win-loss record. And let's go into it why. So first of all, you're a mud boy. So you just get dominated by grass, which is fine. That's on, if, if you're building around Whizcash, you know that. Uh, but the problem is because you only have Blizzard and Mud Bombs, you're very bait dependent. You need to land that Blizzard on a lot of things. So then you have your flyers in here, like Pelipper, Talonflame, Skarmory, where you need to land that blizzard. So in the one shield and two shield, you're not going to do it. But why it goes like sort of hero mode here, if you go to the zero shield for both, it's going to say you're going to land a lot more blizzards. And then suddenly you're now to 26, 28, which is still a losing record, right? I think in almost every shield scenario, you have a losing record. You know, 24 and 30. So in every shield, shield scenario, you have a losing record. And it's the worst in the one shield. And because even a lot of these like neutral matchups here, um, Lapras, Azumarill, Umbreon, Ninetales, Obstagoon, Scrafty, Politoed, like Vigoroth, you're just, Galvantula, you're just out, out balked and outpaced here. So you do have, obviously as a mud boy, you're going to have your huge Bastion win, right? Uh, anything like poison and ground, you're going to have huge wins against. Or not ground, poison and steel, you're going to have huge wins against. But for the most part, you're in the middle-ish range here. And for the most part, you're in the 300-ish losing range here. So for those reasons, I think Whizcash is too bait dependent on the mud bombs to land a blizzard. And it just gets out bulked and outspanned by too many things. So again, Wobbuffet, Pichirisu, Kom Komo-O, haven't used them, not going to analyze them. Samurai, I haven't used it yet either, but I was looking at it, I'm like, okay, 26, that's pretty high. Why wouldn't I just use a Swampert? Like, what does this, what value does this have that Swampert doesn't? And same thing, I went and it was 20 to 35 losses here. I, I ran the different shield scenarios and it's pretty much the same thing. And you just have a ton in the losses in the 200 to 400 range against a lot of just meta pokemon so there's too many just one shield losses here where you just get like outspanned like everything from charmers to water normal safe swaps greedance um meta counter users dark users so for me you just get like out spammed and out bulked too quick here so for it to be that high, again, it's it's kind of a little too high for my liking. Lucario was the first one that popped up, not the first, but like one of the first popped in my head. I'm like, no way is Lucario that high. So on paper, like 23 third of the one, so it's still a loss. They're using Power of Punch here, which again is a bait move. So that's this is probably moving it down already. But Lucario's addition of steel is more of a hindrance than anything, in my opinion. It just adds the extra weakness to fighting. And Lucario in this league is already so glassy. The power punches don't do enough that you still need to land a Shadow Ball. So you're baiting a lot here. And there's just too many losses. Like you just get outspanned in a bulk color. Like obviously there's some good wins against some good meta Pokemon, right? Because you can just ramp up the counter power punches. Uh, and just like you get a lot of good wins to get the meta. Anything that's weak to counter. But again, Cress here, it's going to rely on a bait and landing the Shadow Ball. 
But a lot of these you can just like kind of out spam with counter. So that plays good. But like honestly, I'd rather play with, with Machamp. And I would rather play with lower counter users like Primeape and uh, what's the other one? What is the other Primeape? And I will find it just going down because Surfetched. Surfetched because they hit harder or just as hard. And they have like Leaf Blade Night Slash or Night Slash Cold Combat. So the, the first move instead of Power Punch, that's a nicer, more coverage move to have. So Lucario, I think, is overrated. Uh, Rainy Cast Form this high up. Again, I don't. I did the analysis of this as well. It's one that kind of like popped up like that seems high. And then, but like, you're already down at 36. It's got an evenish win loss ratio. Obviously, you can't fault it for losing to grass because it's a water. So that's fine. And then I'm like, you know, you still lose a lot here, but you're doing okay against your like your Drapions and your Greedents. You're kind of in that 400 Umbreons, Mandibuzz, Vigoroth. So you're in that like 400-ish range, which is kind of just like, you're going to lose, but you put up a fight sort of thing. And then you got your you got some good wins in the 500 range against like Skarmory and Frostlass and stuff like that. And then obviously the higher you go up, you're going to obviously beat your Fires and your Steels, right? So, and that Thunder Moves gives you coverage on like Politoed and stuff. But you need to land it. Again, it's bait dependent on these matchups here. So... It seems a little high to me, but it's not something that I would like fight you about being too high. And there's one more on the overrated I want to talk about. And that goes back. It's kind of similar to the other fighters in Phalanx here. Uh, so I've used Phalanx before. And again, it's fun because you have you have something fun to use. But like, look at those losses. And not only look at the losses, look how hard those losses early on are. Just get walled by the ghosts. You just get destroyed by the charmers and confusion users out spammed here uh, like and um flyers so there's already so many that beat you so hard like you will have some hard wins up on this end like you're getting into that because you're fighting you resist dark too uh and you just out spam here with the counters and superpowers so you obviously take all your steel matchups and your dark matchups and ice matchups so those are pretty strong but honestly for the most part i'm looking at the other counter users to use so those are the pokemon that i think are overrated Let's talk about what some that I think are underrated. And I'm going to start with Shadow Beedrill at 48. So 48, it's already top 50, so it's not, it's already pretty decent. But this is what I like to see in my Pokemon when I look at the meta. I like to see one of two things. Like, well, win-loss record. If you have a win-loss record, that's always positive. But the second part is like your, how hard are your losses and do you bunch up here? So, like, you're going to lose to your fire. You're going to lose to ghost. Like, that's understood. Poison is resisted, and you're weak to fire. So that's fine. And you're going to be bad to flyer. Same thing. Like, steals and, and stuff like that, you're going to lose because of the poison jab. But you do have the drill run, which is super, which is nice. Um, but then you get into a lot of these, like, just, like, you stay in there. Like, the Pelipers, the Laprases, Metacham. And then you win a lot here that you stay in with, like, Alterior Close. Wall Rain, you win. Uh... Crest, Toxic Croak in the like the 500, 600 range. And then you take care of a lot of the meta, obviously, because you hit super effective against Grass uh, and Fairy. And then it's super spammy with the drill runs, and drill run hits for like good damage on a lot. So I think this is underrated because of how much of the meta you can just like take care of in here. And the Shadow, I think, in the I haven't run this analysis, so let me run this analysis just to look at the two shields here. Yeah, you pick up a couple more. That's kind of what I expected. Because of your, just how spammy you are, you probably pick up more there. And I'm guessing you lose more in the zero shield is my guess. Yeah, so you lose a lot more in the zero shield. So Beedrill is one of those things that I kind of figured in the one and two shields, given it's it's a little glassy, but super spammy, able to kind of hold its own. And if you get ahead on energy a little bit, you probably can add like one or two more wins here. So I like... Beedrill as sort of an underrated, Shadow Beedrill as an underrated Pokemon here. Now, well, I'll go through the list. When you get to the 52, because my next one is at like 94 and then we get into the hundreds. When you get into this like 50 to 100 range, I see them as Pokemon that are not meta, but are still strong enough that if you have them on your team, you're going to be able to have sort of just like good coverage all around and be able to flip some matchups. So like... 
Golbat, Escav, Quagsir, Meganium, Frostlass, Swilus, Venusaurs, Hemotops I used multiple times, Blastoise, Noctowl, Toxicroak, uh, Pelipper, Snorlax, Snorcast. So these are the type of Pokemon that I think do fit there. I think that they are strong Pokemon that can hold their own in a lot of these matchups. Um, don't have the strongest against like all the meta, but for like a secondary tier Pokemon for your team, I think they work well. Excuse me if you can hear the dragon of the chair upstairs. So now we go down to, so I, I have to look at this because I have Ops, Obstacle at 94 with a question mark beside here when I did this initially. And it's one of those things where it's like, okay, 30 and 24, again, to be ranked 94 and have a super solid win-loss ratio in the one shield is pretty good. I guess where its weaknesses is that it you do have such these hard losses because you're weak to counter users and you're weak to fairy. And you like get, yeah, resisted by fairy here, right? So you have those hard losses to counter users and fairies going on here. Um, so there's a lot of losses under 300, but there's also a lot of, of like just in the 400 to 600 range, which is what I like, right? You can hang in there with Politoed, even like Swampert, you can hang in there with Registeels, which are everywhere. And then you've got some wins against like other darks, like Mandibuzz and Sableye and Umbreons. And you can be even because Noctowl and Skarmory are both hit neutral for the counters. You spam the Night Slashes, so you pick up Frostlass. Um, and then the counter user, like a lot of good wins, like Drapion's on here, Fair, like obviously Fairthorn, Walrein's on here, um, and then obviously Bastion and stuff like that. So, I think that Obstagoon is a pretty, and it's it's okay bulk. Like if you if you use it in Great League and Ultra League, you're gonna be surprised that it's a little, it's more bulkier than these other counter users. And it's not, a, it's a counter user, but it's not a fighting user, right? So I do think that Umber, that um, Obstagoon has a little more play than at the 95. Um, like I can, I, I don't want to go over because I haven't used a lot of these. I haven't used Fortress really. I haven't used like Licky. I've used Zero Um so Drapion's at 107, but I'm going to go with the Shadow one because it's at 151, but I'll, I'll go for that in a second. Um, a couple of these other ones, like, yeah, you can, now you're getting to like, because Blastoise was like 75 without the Shadow, and Obama Snow is like 20 without the sh with the Shadow, and 114 down here, and it's because like, sometimes the Shadow Pressure is, in a, the Obama Snow case, adds a lot of wins, because then you only need sort of like two Weather Balls sometimes instead of three. So that's huge. Uh, and other times the shadow is like kind of more just a hindrance that you lower your defense too much and you don't get enough um, out, output with the shadow bonus attack. So that's why it's kind of, it, it, it's hit or miss there. So when do people say, does, does shadow versus non-shadow matter? matter? It matters in some scenarios. So I would check PB Poke to see what scenarios those do matter. Uh, so Talifame dropped to 122 which seems like a lot to me because you still have a win-loss record that's pretty good 30 to 24 obviously your weathers your not weathers your waters still beat you but for the most part like even in neutral matchups where you can just go um like incinerate on these like umbreons and mandibuzzes you still lose but like you're hanging in there and some things you could take on the on the big end you're normals that you still win like talon flame ramped up and then you can get into your like super strong wins obviously grass but like steels and ice it just has so many strengths and then you wall sort of fighters because you're a flyer so i understand why they knocked it down because it does get in the hero mode analysis before where you like you're either you're baiting you're baiting they fall for the bait and then you can land the brave bird so there's that plus the incinerate is a five turn move. It's very, it's much easier to catch the move and it's much easier to like take it out during a five turn move animation. So that's why it has a knockdown, but I still think it has enough win loss record and it has enough play against most of the meta and ramped up. It can just like dominate. I imagine I, I haven't looked at it, but I'm wondering if the two shield is much higher. Okay. It's actually lower. Um, maybe cause you just get spammed here maybe in the zero shield uh it's pretty glassy so maybe in zero shield you don't okay you do pick up a lot more wins because you can land a lot more brave birds here so i still think it's it's 
it was overrated before, but now I think it's actually underrated at 122. Um, and then I'm going to go down to 135 because Ferrothorn is on here. And Ferrothorn is so tricky. So, like, it's got not a great win-loss record. Like, I'll admit that. Um, because just, like, the grass... And when, when you add the steel combo, it's good in some cases. It's bad in other cases. When, whenever you add a steel combo with a lot of counter users around, in my opinion, that's when that's when you go bad. And, and Great League is full of counter users, so it's probably better in Ultra League. Um, and that's why you see, like, there's your Metasham, Deox, Scrafty, Obstacle, like, all hardish losses. But it's got enough, like, in my opinion, like, 400-ish to 600 battles here. Plus, you get some, like, okay wins. So, like, it's not amazing. I'll admit it's not amazing. But, like, 135 seems very low considering some of the other things on this list here. Um, so let's go down to Shadow Drapion. Shadow Drapion. So, I've used Drapion. I have the Shadow. And it is a good save swap. I would probably rather use the... Um, the normal because the, sh the shadow does not add enough in its output of damage compared to the loss you get so i would actually this is one where i would go normal drapion but even in this scenario you have what i like here you have a lot of that middle-ish range and you use it as a safe swap generally right so you're not going to have a lot of hard wins you're not going to have hard losses you're just going to have a lot of neutral like you used to have some 200 because again ground type pokemon and fighters you're going to have problems against but for the most part, you're just in that three to 600 range with most of these battles, which is what you want in a safe swap. But it's a safe swap, right? So what you can do on PV Poke is you can say, you know what? If I get like one Poison Sting in before these Pokemon come in and switch in, does that change the matchup? So if you go one Poison Sting, you get nine energy. So 25, 29 jumps up to 31, 24. And that's why I think Drapion is underrated here. If you use Drapion as a safe swap and you get one Poison Sting in before your opponent comes in, you have now just flipped, what was it before? It was 25 and 29. So you go from 25, 29 to 31, 24. So you pick up six more wins there, which I think is significant. And not that you will always get two Poison Stings in, but I got to imagine like two Poison Stings. 36 and 19, right? And that's where you look for these type of Pokemon as safe swaps. Because they, if you get ahead on energy, they're deadly. And this poison sting, one poison sting ahead, flips so many more matchups. And suddenly you're a lot more in the 400 range, even your losses, right? You pick up more in the 400 range, and then you flip a lot of these early 500 that you otherwise would have lost in neutral matchups. So that's why I think Drapion is an amazing safe swap, and that's why I think it is underrated at its ranking that is at. We have to go over Shadow Nine Tails. How many times have I done Shadow Nine Tails? How many times has Shadow Nine Tails dominated for me? So 2035, obviously terrible win loss record. Not terrible, but not good. I want to see if the two shield you get. Uh it's pretty glossy. So two shield actually may be worse. Okay, slightly better because you do spam. So it's funny because this analysis probably will show Oops. I want to look at it in the zero shield. Even worse. So in the one shield, it is... So this, this is what I say about Ninetales and why I think it has better play and how I've dominated with it so many times. You got your hard losses against your waters. Your fire, right? So you you can't do much about that. Like, build your team around cowering water. That's, that's the first thing I would say. So the problem and ground, water and ground. But for the most part, all your losses are water and ground in this area. And then you get to your sort of like 400 ish range, which is like you stay in it, which against a lot of the meta, Scrafty, Obscure, Umbreon, Mew, Vigoroth. So you still lose, but you're spamming enough to stay in this. And then again, spamming enough to like take out some of these ones, uh, Registeel, Greedent, Pidgeot, stuff like that. And then you're obviously great against fire ice and stuff like that so why i think it's un underrated and why i use it so well is because of like the meta it takes out right glaring sunfrisk skarmory frostlass to a certain extent it well like obviously frostlass but it's not as 
like meta in open. A9 tails, trevenants, toxicroats, drapions, chrysalias, registeels, right? So you have a lot of win against the meta. And then same thing, like save lies are like close battles there, mandibuzz, wall rains. Roll rain needs to land an earthquake, obviously. So you can like, if you shield properly, you'll take that one too. So I think it's just got a lot of just like spamminess that if you time properly, you can probably flip. I don't want to say you always sneak, like sneak in a move, but like, I want to see what happens when you sneak in a fire spin. 20 to 35 to 26, 29, right? So if you sneak in one fire spin, you can pick up a lot more and then you'll get a lot more in that closer to 400 range there. So that's why I think I've always, I love using nine tails. I think it's so underrated for this, for the meta that it goes. Galvantula. So let's go down here because Galvantula is ranked 182, which is mind blowing to me when I first saw this because Galvantula's were, was the meta for a one time. And again, neutral, how is the 182 ranked Pokemon have a 31 and 23 record here? Obviously, so ground, electric, you're going to get walled by your ground, right? So Nidoqueen, Stunfist, stuff like that. You're just going to get outpaced with your charmers. So not much you can do there. You're just going to get outpaced by the charm of Wigglytuff and Sylveon and stuff like that. But then again, you have a ton of these 400-ish to 600 matchups here. Uh, against a lot of the meta that you'll normally see, so Altaria, Umbreon, Trevenant. So these are still losses, but like they're close losses. And then you get some close wins here against like Deox, um, Warren, Figuroth. And then you get some like nice wins against your Darks because you can throw lunges. You can throw lunges on Mandibuzz, Obscune, Sableye, stuff like that. Obviously, your Waters you'll dominate, your Flyers you're going to dominate. So it, like Galvanza was everywhere, and why it stopped coming everywhere is because of right here, Bastion, Glare, and Sunfisk, Nidoqueen, cores are everywhere, right? So you when when your three biggest losses are against three of like the most meta Pokemon, you get knocked down a lot. So that's why it is so low. But like if you team build around these three, like pair it with two things of Swampert and Plus to take these three out, you're okay. Like Galvanza is a super strong Pokemon on your team couple more here um in my opinion so 218 is greedent and having just used greedent as a safe swap in um retro cup seems crazy to me and this is the same thing so you lose a ton fine but greedent is a safe swap right and it's to do one thing grab shields or try and flip so the fact that your lowest loss is a 260 means you're not even that's, that's a, it's a hard loss. I've been seeing it's crafty your counter users, but it's not a terrible loss for like your worst one. And then you're in, you're still getting just like out bulked and out spam, not out bulked because you're super bulky, but like their moves hit harder than your moves do because you're you're more heavy. Plus they have some bulk behind them. And then you get a lot to like the 400. So it's mainly to flip, right? So I always like to do, okay, if I'm flip, if I'm using this as a safe swap and I can sneak in one bullet seed, what does that do for me? So you go from 1737 to 2925, all hovering in the middle here, right? So that is why Greedon is like an insane safe swap because it is super bulky. If you can sneak a bullet see through, you've just substantially flipped your outcomes there. And it takes care of like a lot of the meta in the safe swap because I've, I have done like safe swapped and then they come with an Azu. But you get out, you get beat there. You beat them there. The Cresselia, you beat them there. Trevenant, you beat them there with crunches. Like, so there's a lot if you get like one ahead here. There's a lot that you can beat. And even these, if you like, like these 461 losses are losses. But like if you can like, like time properly or they time improper, like incorrectly, you can flip these matchups too. So that's why I think Green is like way underrated this, this low. I have two more here. I can't really speak to this one. This one has always just been a pain in my behind when I go against it. Shadow My Wow. The Steel Fairy combo is so annoying. So 22, 33. So it's got some hard losses, right? So your waters, your yeah, your waters, your other fairies. I'm just gonna take you out. But you have a lot of just say like in these three, four hundred range. You have to beat most of the like and then look at the wins though. Ops like Obstigu and Mandibuzz. Umbreon, Greedent, Drapion's Altaria, Ninetales, Trevenant, Skarmory, 
and your and your grass like there's got a lot of just like wins against like strong meta so i haven't used it before but every time i've gone against it it's been a it's been a pain so 250 seems like really low to to not build around it and one more that caught me off guard i know we're getting to the deep 200s now shadow hypno and i think it's because like 22 32 not great i think it's because people have way more access to darks now and they have more access to because like back in the day not a ton of people had sableye not a ton of people had scrafties everyone had umbreons but like mandibuzz and eggs now um kafa grigas and trevenant weren't there before so hypno was everywhere before but because these are so prevalent now it, it got knocked down a lot but like the confusion damage does a ton in neutral situations um yeah just in neutral situations i mean obviously you're gonna get your wins against your fighters and stuff like that uh but in neutral situations you just are staying in there the confusion damage does a lot um uh, so it's still a decent it's bulky pokemon too so it's decent to build around it's just that with all the new sort of meta pokemon it kind of limits its play a bit but i was like 283 wow this was like i don't want to say top 10 ranked at one point but it was pretty highly ranked at one point so to see 283 kind of really caught me off guard anyways that is oh did i just close everything okay perfect so that is my analysis on the rankings um let me know if this was helpful i can do one for ultra league and master league i think master league is i think ultra league will be better because i think ultra league has more pokemon in play master league is it's a pretty set meta so i can do it too if you want to do me do one for master league but for the most part, I think I'll just stick with Ultra League next. If you guys found this helpful, I uh, appreciate you hit the thumbs up button if you did. Uh, and I will see you guys in the next one.